Hello, my name is Keshwani. I don't know what just happened. My name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. I think there was a slight spike in the level of estrogen, but we won't go there. Uh, my name is Keshwani, as I said. We are here to learn algebra. Today is our lesson number 14. Let's see what do we have for today. What we have here is a question which says, show, show that, show that the expressions, show that the expressions x squared minus 2x minus 15 and the expression q squared minus 12x plus 35 are equal when x equals 5. That's what we are asked to do. We are asked to show that these two expressions are equal when x assumes the value of 5. Now we could actually just plug in 5 in this expression and that expression and show that they are both 0 and be done with it. But I don't want to do it that way. We are going to do it properly. We are going to do it properly. That way we learn not only... The, 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 we are not going to solve this problem just for the solo, sake of solving the problem because if that was the bloody point then there is no need to be here. You are here of course of your own volition because we want to learn the algebra the proper way. We want to learn the language of the algebra. You are here of your own volition, I said. What does it mean, volition? I'm, I'm going to digress here for a second. And what does it mean to digress? Digress means to go off topic. You're going to learn it on day number three. Volition, when did we learn it? I know we learned it because I use it all the time. Day number 37. We are, what I'm trying to make you understand is that we are here to do things the proper way. We are not here to do solve the problem and do whatever it is the assignment that we have to do because we are looking for a grade or we can look at, we are looking because we are looking to buy uh, earn a certain number of credits to get your degree. No, nobody is grading you. Nobody is giving you any credits. You are here of your own volition, of your own free will. Type in the tag Kashwani Prayer dash vocab dash day. 37 and learned the word properly. Day 37, the vocabulary videos that I have put together. Today is our day number 14 of the algebra. Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day 37. That says vocab. Uh, I try to do it in a hurry. Dash vocab dash day, dash day 37 and learn it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the proper way, the way it should be done, so that we not only uh, solve the problem that is given to us, but also learn the language, the lingo. So the proper way to do is to give these two, two expressions name. So here we go. Here's the solutions. The very first thing we need to do is let's give these two expressions name names rather. In other words, let's christen them. Let's christen them. Let's give them a name. Christen. What's the word? Day number 63, I believe. I just taped it. I should know, but I don't. It was day number 63. Just type in Keshwani Prayer dash vocab dash day 63 and you will learn the word christen. Christen means to, it means to baptize somebody and also means metaphorically to give something or someone name. So let's give these two expressions names, let's christen them. What do you want to call them? You can call them anything you want. You can call this expression anything that you want. You can call this expression, you can call this expression Mike and you can call that expression Joe if you like, but that would be silly. We do not go around calling expressions by the names of human being. Tradition dictates that I call them by some letter, some letter of the alphabet. And now when I say some letter of the alphabet, it doesn't even have to be English alphabet. It could be uh, Greek alphabet. We can, uh, we can call this one, we can call this expression, we can call this expression alpha. And we can call this expression beta. Or I can call this expression delta. And I can call this expression, this is a delta. I think that's gamma. I can call this expression gamma 
I can call that expression delta. I can, we can call this expression any name that we want. We are just going to give them two names so that it's easier to talk about a particular expression instead of pointing to it. This expression, not that one. This expression, not that one. Instead of doing that, we like to give things names so that it's easier to manipulate them. So I'm going to call them, let's call them something, something simple to deal with. Let's call them P and Q. Okay. Let's call them P and Q. Once we call them P and Q, now this question that is given to us, this question that is given to us can be expressed a little bit differently. I'm making a big fuss not because it's a very difficult thing to solve, as I explained already times as I explained already several times. We are learning the language of the algebra. That's what we are here for. Do you understand? We're not here right now. We're not watching this video just merely to show, see how this thing is solved. It's very simple. We just plug in the value of x and these two and show they are equal. That's all. They are zero. That's all. Or they are equal rather. That's not. That's the language. We're going to rephrase this question based on these names. So now that we have the name, this question that, we have, that you see there, the question now is show that p of 5 equals q of 5. That's how we see. That's why mathematicians like to give some things names. Notice how, notice how much this is. Show that the expressions, this expression right here and this expression are equal when x is 5. It was so verbose. This thing is so verbose. It is so wordy. Instead of using so many words, it is so verbose. It can be said succinctly. Show that Show that P of 5 equals Q of 5. That's all. End of the story. Show that P of 5 equals Q of 5. Which means, show that the expression P equals to the expression Q when X happens to be 5 in both of them. Show that the value of the expression P when X equals 5 is the same as the value of the expression Q when X also happens to be 5. But they didn't have to be 5. This could have been 5 or this could have been 7. Do you understand? What am I looking for? I have things in my hand here. Verbose. When did we learn the word verbose? Day number 16. Day number 16. These are good words to know. These are, these are good words to learn. Not just for say, not just, not just a not just for the sake of learning the words, or even though that that's a good enough reason to, to learn the words because you want to explain your vocabulary, but these are particularly good words to learn, these are particularly useful words to learn. If you're, if you're down the road, if you're planning to sit for GRE, GMAT, or SAT, or TOEFL, you understand? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show that the value of the expression P equals to the value of the expression Q when X equals 5 in both of them. So let's do it. I shouldn't have written all of these words and I don't want to erase them, but I have no choice. Verbose was day number 16, Christen was day number 63, digress is 3, volition was day number 37, and finally demarcation was something we learned on day number 12. So here is the expression P, x squared minus 2x minus 15. So P of 5 would be 5 squared minus 2 times 5 minus 15. 5 squared is 25 and 2 times 5 is 10 minus 15 so it's a 0. Turns out that P of 5 is 0. If P of 5 is 0 then the Q of 5 then the Q of 5 better turn out to be 0 because that's what our job is. Our job is to show that they are equal when x equals 5. So what is the Q of x? Right here is the Q. That's, that's, that's the expression that we are calling Q. So Q of x is x squared minus 12x plus 35. Put in 5 here so we get 5 squared minus 12 times 5 plus 35. Well, 5 squared is 25, 25 plus 35 is 60, and 12 times 5 is also 60. So plus 60 and minus 60, there is equal to 0. Voila. So we have shown, we have shown that 
P of 5 does equal Q of 5 because they both equal 0. Because they both equal, both of these expressions happen to equal to 0 when x is 5. This is read as, this is read as P of 5. This is read as Q of 5. Q of 5 means the value of the expression Q, the value of the expression Q, I'm going to write it here, Q of 5 means the value of the expression I'm not sure if you can read that low actually. Value of the expression Q when x equals 5. In the event that you cannot read this law, I'm going to read I'm going to read it to you what I just wrote here. Q of 5 means value of the expression Q, value of the expression Q when x equals 5. And we have shown that the value of the expression Q when x equals 5 equals the value of the expression p when x also happens to be 5 and it turns out that those values are the values of those expressions are 0 q of 5 is 0 p of 5 is 0 so we have shown that they're equal that's it we're done for today i will see you tomorrow again on day number 15 tomorrow on the 15th day for the algebra lesson we're getting very close to the first 20 days where we're learning how to evaluate expressions once we know how to handle ex once we learn once we have once we are a little bit uh, comfortable with handling expressions and evaluating them, then we'll move on to adding and subtracting expressions, and then we'll finally we'll move on to multiplying and adding, adding subtractions. And once we are used to all of that, knowing what, what an algebraic expression is, how to handle it, how to read it, how to add them, how to subtract them, how to multiply them, and how to divide the expressions, then we'll be ready for doing, or then we'll be ready to do word problems, which I'm going to start with, which I'm going to start with uh, day number 50. Well, actually, day number 51. After we have done few linear, after we have done few linear equations, I will see you tomorrow on day number 15. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can go to any of these website addresses and send me an email, or you can go to keshwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. All right? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.